You should be a monster. You know, because everyone says, well, you should be harmless, virtuous. You shouldn't do anyone any harm. You should sheath your competitive instinct. You shouldn't try to win. You know, you, you don't want to be too aggressive. You don't want to be too assertive. You want to take a back seat and all of that. It's like, no. Wrong. You should be a monster, an absolute monster, and then you should learn how to control it. If you take people, and I've told you this, and you expose them voluntarily to things that they are avoiding and are afraid of, you know, that they know they need to overcome in order to meet their goals, their self-defined goals. If you can teach people to stand up in the face of the things they're afraid of, they get stronger. And you don't know what the upper limits to that are, because you might ask yourself, like, if for 10 years, if you didn't avoid doing what you knew you needed to do, by, the def by your own definitions, right, within the value structure that you've created to the degree that you've done that, what would you be like? Well, you know, there are remarkable people who come into the world from time to time, and there are people who do find out over decades-long periods what they could be like if they were who they were, if they said, if they spoke their being forward. And they get stronger and stronger and stronger. We don't know the limits to that. We do not know the limits to that. And so you could say, well, in part, perhaps the reason that you're suffering unbearably can be left at your feet because you're not everything you could be and you know it. And of course, that's a terrible thing to admit and it's a terrible thing to consider, but there's real promise in it, right? Because it means that Perhaps there's another way that you could look at the world and number, another way that you could act in the world. So what it would reflect back to you would be much better than what it reflects back to you now. And then the second part of that is, well, imagine that many people did that. Because we've done a lot as human beings. We've done a lot of remarkable things. And I've told you already, I think before that today, for example, about 250,000 people will be lifted out of abject poverty and about 300,000 people attached to the electrical power grid. We're making people, we're lifting people out of poverty collectively at a faster rate that's ever occurred in the history of humankind by a huge margin. And that's been going on unbelievably quickly since the year 2000. The UN had pl planned to have poverty between 2000 and 2015, and it was accomplished by 2013. So there's inequality developing in many places, and you hear lots of political agitation about that. But overall, the the tide is lifting everyone up, and that's a great thing. And we have no idea how fast we can multiply that if people got their act together and really aimed at it. Because, you know, my, my experience is with people that we're probably running at about 51% of our capacity. Something, I mean, you can think about this yourselves. I often ask undergraduates how many hours a day you waste or how many hours a week you waste. And the classic answer is something like four to six hours a day. You know, inefficient studying, uh, watching things on YouTube that not only do you not want to watch, that you don't even care about, that make you feel horrible about watching after you're done, that's probably four hours right there. You know, you think, well, that's 20, 25 hours a week, it's 100 hours a month, that's two and a half full work weeks, it's half a year of work weeks per year. And if your time is worth $20 an hour, which is a radical underestimate, it's probably more like 50, if you think about it in terms of deferred wages, if you're wasting 20 hours a week, you're wasting $50,000 a year. And you are doing that right now. And it's because you're young, wasting $50,000 a year is a way bigger catastrophe than it would be for me to waste it because I'm not gonna last nearly as long. And so if your life isn't everything it could be, you could ask yourself, well, what would happen if you just stopped wasting the opportunities that are in front of you? Compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not to who someone else is today. Yes. Because you need to be, you need to have a, a hierarchy of improvement. You need to, to be aiming so, for something. And that means you're going to be lesser than people who've always already attained along that dimension. Yes. And that can give rise to envy. So the question is, who should you defeat in the final analysis? And the answer is, you should defeat your former self. You should be constantly trying to do that. And you're the right control for yourself, too, because you're the one who's had all your advantages and disadvantages. And so if you want to compete fairly with someone, then you should be competing with you. And it is the case, and this is what we were talking about too with regards to the self-improvement of the fighter, is well, if you're improving yourself, then what you are doing is competing with your lesser self. And then you might also ask, well, what is that lesser self? And that lesser self would be resentful and bitter and, and um, um, aggressive and vengeance-seeking and all of those things that go along with having a negative moral character. And those are things that interfere with your ability to progress as you move forward through life. So it's very necessary to understand that this is why 
You know, I've been stressing this idea of personal responsibility. It's like, well, personal responsibility is to compete with yourself, is to be slightly better than yourself the next day. Yes. And it better in some way that you can actually manage. And that's humility. It's right. Like, well, I'm a flawed person. And I've got all my problems. Could I be as good as person X? It's like not the right question. The right question is, could you be slightly better tomorrow than your currently flawed self? And the answer to that is, if you have enough humility to set the bar properly low, then you could be better tomorrow than you are today. Because what you also have to do is you have to say, well, here's all my flaws and my insufficiencies and the best that someone that flawed and insufficient could do to improve and actually do it is this. And that's not worth going out in the street and celebrating with placards, you know. It's like, well, this is why I tell people to clean the room. It's not gonna brag to someone that you did that, but someone as insufficient as you might be able to manage it. And that means you actually are on the pathway to self-improvement and you're transcending your former self. And you might say, well, what's the right way of being in the world if there is such a thing? And it's not acting according to a set of rules. It's attempting continually to transcend the flawed thing that you currently are.